Hi, <clears throat> welcome to lecture number 35 of Ultimate Python course. In this course, we are going to see what are some of the inbuilt functions which are very useful and very used very frequently. There are a lot of inbuilt functions, but then I have selected only a few. They will be used uh, uh, very frequently. Okay. So, uh, please don't take the notes. Slides are given in the description and watch my video set to expedite. So, what are the Python built-in methods or okay they we are going to classify the building machine methods into two types one is utility functions and other is iterable utilities okay so utility functions are sorted reversed all any min max sum now let's see sorted so sorted is a function which will return a new sorted list while keeping the original unchanged which means if you say if you pass iterable see even though we are going to take example as a list it can be used on any iterable it can be used on set it can be used on a tuple it can be used on string right so any iterable it is applicable but then i will take examples of lists only otherwise it will be too many examples of the same thing right so sorted iterable reverse equal to false means ascending order so what it will do is it will do out of place sorting which means it will create a new list and you it will give you the new list which is sorted but the original one will be in place original one original one will not change okay without modifying the original one existing one now coming to list dot sort we have already seen list dot sort so this is sorted we have already seen list dot sort in list dot sort what happened what happened was it was doing in, in in place sorting which means the list which you have given that itself is sorted and it returns none okay that is the key difference sorted means it will give you a new list list dot sort means it will sort the original list and it will not return anything for example <coughs> If you have a list and if you apply it sorted of L, then you are going to get a new list. So if that can be captured in the new list. Now, if you see what is there in the new list, you will get a sorted list. And original list is as it is. If you see what is the original list, it is as it is. Same as same as the one that is given. Okay. It will not modify the original list. Now you can also do descending order. Let's say there is a list. Now you are calling sorted on that list and uh, you are passing reverse equal to true. It means you want to do it in the descending order. Okay. You want to do it in the descending order. So, so if you observe it, you are getting a new list that is being written by sorted. And if you print that new list, you can see that it is in descending order. See that the list is in descending order okay and the original list l is unchanged original list is same original list is same so whenever you see reverse equal to true that means it is in descending order okay now reversed this function will return an iterator that yields the items in the reverse order now if you want to reverse the elements in a list and you get a new list you are going to use reversed so reversed is out of place which means it will create a new list and give it to you not the original list and the original list will be same as it is without getting modified and list dot reverse you have already seen right so list dot reverse is a in place reversing in place reversing means it will modify the input given the same list given and it will give you that modified list okay so it modifies the original list and it does not return anything okay so reverse list function returns a iter iterable iterator okay so for example if you have a list and if you write reversed on that list reversed on that list and if you try to see what is returned you will see an object iterator it is a reverse iterator you, see, you will see an object it is not a list so only in this case in this case of reversed you have to convert the result into a list okay so reversed is when you are calling reversed and when you are getting an object 
when you are getting an object you convert it into list by using the keyword list here you are getting an object which is new list see you are reversing so you are getting a new object and you are converting that into a list now if you print it you are going to see the reverse so the reverse of the original one and the original one is as it is original one is as it is right now either you use list dot reverse or you use reverse that doesn't modify the original list okay now let us see what is the difference between sorted and list dot sort reversed and list dot reverse if you use sorted it is going to do out of place sorting which means you are going to get a new list it returns a new sorted list keeping the original one unchanged now what is the syntax you are going to see new list equal to sorted of l always you should have something to capture the output given by the sorted now list dot sort list dot sort is a in place sorting which means it will sort the given list and it will sort it in place and it will return none it will not return anything it will return none now l dot sort you need not capture the return type return type is none here so l itself is modified so you don't have to capture it you can directly write l dot sort now reversed so reversed will do out of place sorting and it will give an iterator now you have to convert that iterator into a list okay so see this syntax reversed of l is going to give you an object now convert it into a list then capture it somewhere a list is captured okay list dot reverse so it is in place reversing which means the same list that you have given is reversed it reverses it reverses the list in place and the syntax is l dot reverse okay so you need not capture the return type because the original list itself is modified okay all function all function returns true if all elements in the iterable evaluate to be true see this if i write like this all of a iterable then if all the elements evaluate to be true then it will return a true if at least one element is false it will return a false i will show you with example for example we have a list like that and we have written a list comprehension for each number in the gate scores which means in this list in this list that number has to be greater than 50 for each number in the gate score number has to be greater than 50 if all of them pass this test then it will return true all of them are greater than 50 therefore all of them pass the test so whenever all of them pass the test we are going to get a value true we are getting true since all the elements are greater than 50 right now look at this example so number should be greater than 50 for all numbers in the gate scores which means for each number in the gate score that number should be greater than 50 now if you observe it this is greater than 50 greater than 50 greater than 50 greater than 50 but this is not greater than 50 even if one element fails you are going to get a false with all now if you pass a empty list to all it will return a true because an empty list returns a true because there are no elements that evaluate to false there are there are no elements which will generate false therefore it is obviously true any function any function returns true if at least one element in the iterable evaluates to be true okay so syntax is any of the iterable so let's see this if at least one of them is true then all will return true uh, if at least one element is true then any any will return true okay so now see this <coughs> for all numbers in gate score for all numbers in gate score they have to be greater than 75 so clearly 91 is there which is greater than 75 therefore it will return true 91 is there which is greater than 75 therefore it will return true 
Now in this case, in this case, all the numbers should be greater than 95. For all numbers in gate score, list comprehension, for all numbers in gate score, number is greater than 95. Now, none of the numbers are greater than 95. Therefore, there is not even one number which satisfies this condition. Therefore, any will return false. Now, when you are passing an empty list, when you are passing an empty list, it will return false to any. When you are passing an empty list to false, to any, it will return false. Why is it returning false? Because the reason is an empty list returns false because there are no elements that evaluate to true. So there is no element that evaluates to be true. That is why it is giving you false, right? Min function, min you already know, right? So it will give you the smallest element. For example, if I write, give a list and if I give apply min, it will give me the minimum element, which is five in this case. Now, if you give min, if you give a empty list to min, it will give you an error saying that argument is empty sequence. Now, in in while giving min, you cannot combine integers and strings. You can have only strings or you can have only integers, but you cannot combine integers and strings because they are not comparable. You cannot compare a with the integer, right? So what is it? Less than not supported between instances of string and integer. Okay. Max. Now max function will give you max of the triple. So if you apply max, then you are going to see the max value, which is 100. Now, if you apply max on empty list, it will give you error. Now, if you try to compare numbers and strings, it will not work because it will say that greater than symbol not supported between instances of string and integer. Okay. So even though I'm using lists in all the examples, you can also use a tuple or you can also use a set in this okay or a string you can uh, you can work with all of them as long as they are iterables now sorting sorting happens between okay now these are the interview questions so one interview question is can sorting happen between these elements one two and a what is your answer sorting does not happen because less than is not supported. So sorting does not L dot sort does not happen. Now, will reverse happen on these elements? Yes, reverse can happen. For reverse, you can have elements as integers and strings and any combination of that. Okay. So guys, it is hell a lot of effort from our side. If possible, like it. If possible, share it if possible subscribe to the channel only if possible and if it is not too much pain talk about it to your friends and grow the channel please thank you if you want to take my gate classes we go to the website ravindrababuravala.in and you are going to see all my gate classes available there okay so coming to the classes they are all recorded why am i doing recorded why am i not doing live classes is I have thousands of students registering for my courses every year. But then if I conduct a live class, only 20 or 30 people will be there. 20 or 30, that's it. Maximum is 40 I had. The reason is live classes are little bit wasting your time. See, you cannot watch a live class at 2x speed. You have to watch at the pace at which I teach. Generally, I will be very, very slow while teaching. So if you can go through the live classes, you can watch them at 2x speed and you can complete the syllabus very fast. 400 plus hours content is there for gate. And if you are going to watch them at normal pace, it will take 400 hours. But if you watch it at 2x speed, it will take just 200 hours, right? So if you want any of my gate classes, gate computer science or gate DA, the price is just 10,000 rupees. It is very, very reasonable for the kind of quality we provide. We have test series, we have doubt sessions, we have videos, we have lecture notes for everything. Even you don't have to write any lecture notes. I will provide you lecture notes for every subject. You just have to sit back, watch the videos at 2x speed and revise the notes. Short notes will be provided, long notes will be provided, formulas will be written in a separate notes. Everything will be there provided to you. You don't have to work hard. 
and coming to if you are planning to go abroad we also have study abroad program you can go through my number my number is on whatsapp my whatsapp number is in the website if you are planning to do masters abroad that is a very good choice it is better than doing masters in india so if you are planning to go abroad we will help you out right from the from taking the passport to getting the visa visa us visa right so we will help you out in the entire process okay so do visit the website see what is happening there even dsa course is there for 5000 rupees which is both in python and c++ okay so thank you so much